Shinsuke Nakamura may be a name that you've only recently become familiar with, but trust me when I say he's been a star his entire wrestling career. He's got a great look, a ton of charisma, and is awesome in the ring with his unique style. Though he's only now just come over to WWE, he's been entertaining audiences for well over a decade, and today we're going to cover how all that happened. I present to you, Wrestling Origins, Shinsuke Nakamura. Before we even get into this, I want to apologize for my pronunciation with some of these words, names, and phrases. Also, I'd like to point out that at this time, Nakamura's autobiography is not available in English, so some information about his childhood I am unable to confirm. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Shinsuke Nakamura, which is his real name, was born in Kyoto, Japan in February of 1980. Nakamura was just your average kid. He liked his anime and was a big fan of the SD Gundam series and loved to draw characters from it. Though I can't confirm this, it's also said that as a kid, Nakamura was bullied quite bad by classmates and wouldn't fight back. He was a passive child and also apparently was deemed a crybaby by his sisters who constantly scolded him. This was one reason he always wanted to be able to defend himself. Shinsuke also encountered pro wrestling when he was young. Among his friends, he was the biggest wrestling fan and once during a field trip to Tokyo in junior high, he bought a book called How to Be a Pro Wrestler. I'm not sure how effective the book was, but it shows Nakamura's dedication nonetheless. During his younger years, Nakamura also played basketball and practiced martial arts such as karate. At one point, Nakamura was sure he wanted to become a proper martial artist like Jackie Chan and was planning to head to China after graduating school. However, that changed when he was introduced to amateur wrestling in high school. He joined the amateur wrestling club at school and would excel, quickly becoming captain. In 1998, Shinsuke reportedly won first place at the JOC Cup at the 83 kilogram class, followed by placing fourth in the All Japan World Championship at 97 kilograms. Nakamura was no joke when it came to wrestling. By this point, Nakamura was a bit conflicted as to what he wanted to do. Not only was he a fan of wrestling, both amateur and pro, but also followed K1 kickboxing since its early days. He continued wrestling well into university and continued to do well. At the same time, Nakamura also practices MMA skills. In September of 2001, Shinsuke Nakamura went to a tryout for New Japan Pro Wrestling, and with his myriad of skills, he made it. He would be initiated into the New Japan Dojo in March of 2002 where he would train to become a pro wrestler. He would debut in NJPW in August 2002 against Tadeo Yasuda. Here in New Japan, he quickly began rising the ranks and making a name for himself. Many saw him as a major prospect, which earned him the name Super Rookie. By the time the end of the year came, Nakamura decided that he wanted to compete as a martial artist as well. He competed in a combat sport that was essentially no holds barred, as in almost anything goes, and had fighters using multiple fighting styles. Think of it like today's MMA, but with less rules. On December 31st, 2002, Shinsuke Nakamura competed in his first fight against Daniel Gracie, but lost via submission. But hey, it was a Gracie, you can't really hold that against him. At this point, Nakamura was simultaneously competing in New Japan and MMA. His second fight would come on May 2nd, 2003, when he defeated Jan the Giant, a 300 plus pound man, with a guillotine submission. His next fight was later that year in September, where he won by submission as well. On December 9th, 2003, Shinsuke Nakamura was given a shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He faced off against Hiroyoshi Tenzan and wanted to become the youngest ever to win the title. He would defend the title once in January of 2004, but was forced to vacate it just a month after that due to an injury. When he returned, Nakamura received a title shot against the current champion, actor, fighter, and wrestler Bob Sapp. However, Nakamura was defeated by the defending champ. Just a few weeks later, Nakamura returned to MMA for his last fight where he defeated Alexei Ignashov via submission, just like the rest of his wins. Presumably, Nakamura gave up MMA to focus on his wrestling career, but that doesn't mean those talents went to waste. Over the years, Nakamura evolved his wrestling style into what is called Strong Style, which combines a lot of strikes such as knees and kicks with submission based wrestling. Now this style of his wasn't really developed in 2004, so I'll touch upon it again later. Jumping ahead to December of that year, Nakamura and his new partner Hiroshi Tanahashi became the IWGP Tag Team Champions. The two served as champions for about 10 months till they dropped the titles to Cho Ten in October. During that time, Nakamura and his partner squared off once during the IWGP U30 Openweight Championship, which Nakamura won. The pair would also defend their belts while they spent time in Mexico, defeating the team of Bucanero and Olimpico. In early January of 2006, Shinsuke Nakamura challenged IWGP heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar for the belt, but would be defeated. 
Just a few short months later in March, Nakamura announced that he was taking some time off to hone his wrestling skills. During this time, Nakamura would head overseas, putting on some muscle and training to get better in the ring. It was even suggested that he be loaned to WWE to gain experience with the large American shows, but Nakamura was urgently needed back in New Japan after Brock Lesnar left. Returning September 2006, Nakamura became part of the Black Stable, which was intent on reforming the wrestling promotion. Soon, Nakamura would be in the title picture once again. In December of 06, Shinsuke failed to capture the IWGP heavyweight belt from Tanahashi and was unsuccessful once again in January 2007 when he lost to Toshiaki Kawada. Nakamura would then compete in the 2007 G1 Climax Tournament where he made it to the semi-finals before dislocating his shoulder. This injury would sideline Nakamura for months. However, when he returned, Nakamura took over Black and reformed the stable under the new name of Rise, which consisted of Prince Devitt and Low Key among others. Finally, by the time January 2008 rolled around, Nakamura was firmly in the title picture once again, and this time would defeat his rival Tanahashi to win the heavyweight title. Just after that, Nakamura would face Kurt Angle in a match that would unify the New Japan belt with the IGF version, which Nakamura won. However, he would drop the title in April to a wrestler from All Japan Pro Wrestling. Nakamura would be unable to capture this belt back when the two had a rematch in February 2009. In April of 2009, Shinsuke Nakamura turned heel. He formed and led a new group called Chaos. It was at this point in his career that Nakamura fully adopted the strong style approach, using a rough combination of knees and straight punches along with his new finisher, Bumaye, a devastating knee to the head. This is when Nakamura became the king of strong style, a moniker that has stuck with him throughout the rest of his career. This reinvented Nakamura would win the IWGP Heavyweight Championship for the third time in September 2009. From here, Shinsuke would go on a crazy run, defending his title six times until finally losing in May of 2010 to Togi Makabe. Following this loss, Nakamura was out of action with a shoulder injury for over a month. Once he eventually got his rematch, Nakamura would lose to Makabe again. Fast forwarding to 2011, Nakamura would win the G1 Climax Tournament that year to earn a title shot, but would lose to Tanahashi once again. A new era in Nakamura's career would begin in July of 2012, when he won the IWGP Intercontinental Championship for the first time. This would be the start of his legendary Intercontinental runs, which culminated in him being the greatest IWGP Intercontinental Champion of all time. Nakamura would defend his belt multiple times against names like Carl Anderson, Kazushi Sakuraba, and Shelton X Benjamin. He would end up with 8 title defenses and a reign of 313 days when he finally lost it to La Sombra in 2013. However, later that year in July, Nakamura would regain his belt to become the first two-time holder of the title. He would once again have a long reign and finally lost it in January of 2014 to longtime rival Hiroshi Tanahashi. After winning the 2014 New Japan Cup, Nakamura took another shot at the Intercontinental Championship and won it for a third time, but would lose it in only his second title defense. I think you're starting to see the trend here. Nakamura repeatedly chased the IWGP Intercontinental Championship and would end up with a total of 5 reigns and over 900 days as champion, stretching into early 2016. On January 4th, 2016, Shinsuke Nakamura successfully defended his title against AJ Styles in a belt that is already being touted by some as match of the year. However, as it turned out, Nakamura had decided to leave the promotion that very same day to sign with WWE. Ironically, AJ Styles also came to that same conclusion. New Japan confirmed Shinsuke Nakamura's departure on January 12th and stripped him of his Intercontinental Championship. Nakamura would wrestle his final match under his New Japan contract on January 30th of this year. After months of anticipation, Nakamura joined the WWE and would debut on April 1st at NXT TakeOver Dallas. Here, he would defeat Sami Zayn to solidify himself as a top contender in NXT. Since then, Nakamura has made a name for himself among American fans and had a notable match with Austin Aries along the way. Most recently, Shinsuke Nakamura challenged Finn Balor to a match that will air on July 13th. And that's it. Wrestling Origins, Shinsuke Nakamura. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more wrestling content. As always, thanks for watching.